So I sat down to watch one of my favorite non-pro wrestling podcasts last night, Kill Tony. And imagine my surprise as the guest listed for Kill Tony this week was none other than the nature boy, Rick motherfucking Flair. And I was stoked. And I was tuned in, eager to see how the episode would go. And what would happen from there would go down in Kill Tony infamy. For those of you not familiar with the show, Kill Tony is a stand-up comedy show hosted by Tony Hinchcliffe. You may recognize him as the guy who sits in on all the Joe Rogan pro wrestling podcasts. He's a big pro wrestling fan. He was there for the Hulk Hogan interview. He was there for the Kurt Angle interview. And, of course, he was there for the Ric Flair interview, which is where he became fast friends with the nature boy, Ric Flair. Well, look at Ric Flair. Look, Rick, you know crazy. what? He's living the dream. He, he's still Ric Flair every he's day. Ric Flair. He's just not wrestling in the ring. He's just doing it in the streets everywhere. You know? It Woo! is he's unbelievable. Like, tell the story about how you were partying with him the other day. Dude, so, <laughs> so he's in town, and uh, he hits me up on a Sunday at like noon. He's like, let's, let's hit the streets tonight. Show me the city. Let's... Uh, have some drinks and pick up some babes. I'm like, okay. <laughs> he, he goes, I'm done with this comic book signing at 5 p.m. I'm like, sweet, I'll meet you at 5. I go to this hotel. I, I say, I find the first like security guy I know. I go, where's the bar? And he points like that. It was just right over his shoulder. And I just see that white flanking <laughs> hair. Yeah. And there are, on each side of them, three and three, just flight attendants, fucking nurses i mean just a gaggle of geese and i'm walking up and i'm like this is like what you what i've heard about forever i'm like walking up to like a music video or the story or the cartoon of rick flair and sure enough he introduced this these ladies work at southwest airlines this one's a this this is that and we he goes let's hit the streets i'll get us a car and uh he gets a car. He gives the guy a stack of hundreds. He goes, you're going to be our driver for the day. <laughs> this random right. Uber driver is like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's like, you're going to be our so driver. Much money. Oh, it's unbelievable. And he is just the man. He start. I mean, he was already pounding vodka cranberries. He's yeah. like, what do you want to drink? I'm like, I'll have what he's having. I haven't had a vodka cranberry since I was like 17 years <laughs> old. And I swear to God, we went all day we went from 1 30 to he didn't leave me until like 8 p.m he like knew his limit he's like i'm gonna get back he didn't seem drunk at all you he must what? have had 17 I, vodka I, 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 I think i think it's because he's <laughs> drunk all the time that's what i think and he's so nice to everybody there was a, is, there's a part is, of me yeah. when you're you know when I, i've been around so many big people for so long where i'm like kind of if they're with me i'm like kind of protective like come on give them some air this and that but he was just embracing everybody he was so cool <laughs> So nice, and everyone's everyone gravitates towards him. Walk he a loves flock of flame, yeah. Rappers he, or like talk I to heard, anybody, yeah. yeah, yeah. Walk a flock of flame. One of the good, great rappers shows up. He goes, "Yeah, Rick, I heard you were here. What's up? Let's hang out." <laughs> like people find out where he is and gravitate towards him. It is, it's everything you hear about. So that sounds on brand for Ric Flair, right? They became fast friends. So Tony said, hey, Rick, why don't you come on by my show, Kill Tony? Which ended up being a huge mistake. Now, for those of you not familiar with Kill Tony, it's a stand-up comedy podcast hosted by Tony Hinchcliffe. He usually has guests on, other comedians, one or two. And they bring comedians. They have a bucket. They draw names out of the bucket. And they bring comedians who have entered for a chance to win the opportunity to come up on stage to perform a one minute of stand-up comedy. And then at that point, they are either uh, exposed to a whole world of opportunity. There's been people that have become regulars on Kill Tony from doing good. Uh, they've won opportunities to open up for Tony on his stand-up shows. Joe Rogan has even picked up people to take on tour directly from the Kill Tony show. So uh, if you do good, you have a world of opportunity ahead of you. However, if you do bad, 
You're probably going to get roasted. And apparently nobody gave Ric Flair this memo. And to make matters worse, there was a murderer's row of stand-up comedians on this show. As the guest was not just Ric Flair, but also Ari Shafir, one of my all-time favorite comedians, drunk, shirtless, and probably on drugs as well, completely out of control and insane. Shane Gillis was on the show as well, also completely drunk and out of control, as well as Mark Norman, Louis J. Gomez. I'm talking a murderer's row of stand-up comedy. And poor Ric Flair had no idea what he was getting into. And uh, he, he quickly made an ass of himself. He kept talking over Tony. He kept trying to be serious and stuff when it was obviously a comedy show. He was drunk out of his mind, had no idea where he was at. Um, but he did get the star treatment as he was brought out onto the stage to a hero's welcome by Tony Hinchcliffe, who is obviously a huge fan of Ric Flair. Check out this clip. And the first human being that I'm bringing up is not just any normal human being at all. In fact, he is your favorite artist favorite artist. He is your hero's hero. Literally. A childhood dream of mine and probably every man in this room. And if it's not one of yours, then you're probably not a real fucking man in the first place. I present to you the 16 time champion of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the nature boy, Rick Flair. But the fun did not last long as Rick quickly found himself to be in over his head and became quite offended by the way that these comedians were roasting these potential wannabe stand-up performers coming up to do their minutes. Ric Flair made an ass of himself and he got very indignant over making fun of the guests. And he stood up and protested. Check out this clip. Daniel, what would we have to do to convince you to stop doing stand-up comedy here tonight? <sighs> How do we turn this into a retirement party for you? Because this is... It's, it's a real no... retirement. Don't want some people. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't... Woo! <laughs> Flair's asleep. Did he fall asleep? Oh, sorry. I don't know. No, he's sorry, on yeah. his phone. He's on his phone. Okay. He's, <laughs> he's like fun Joe he Biden. He's, 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 he <laughs> he's scrolling. It's literally. He's scrolling the Breitbart app. <laughs> guys, I'm Geezers seeing, these days on their phone. Am I right, guys? Shut up, Daniel. <laughs> you're not. You're not part of this thing. Uh, we just saw one of the worst uh, performances ever in the history of the show. Uh, Ric Flair, any advice for Daniel Shepard? Oh, fuck, that's Ric Flair. God damn it. Fuck. God damn it. Oh, well, like you would have done good if you knew. No. <laughs> that would have done worse. God damn it. What did he say? What, you think that was your dead aunt? He said that. There's, there's something kinky about all your heroes you diminishing what? you, though, you know? I mean... Uh, kind of hot. Though, I'm getting right? off on this. <laughs> yeah, I get school. it. Thank you. No, you're, you're, hey, you're, you're not really you're incredible. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, guys, guys. Woo! I didn't even guys. mean to say woo that first time. Guys, I'm guys, just inspired. Shut up, Daniel. Whoa. Whoa. I want people to understand something. I'm here having fun, but as long as it's fun, it's fun. When it becomes. Um, something that I'm not comfortable with, 
and saying something bad, I don't do that. And the minute it goes that way, I'm out of here. Like so, sideways Asian no, no. pussy. <laughs> What's that? That's fun. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. Yeah. That's fun. That's yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. yeah. That was my attempt to be humorous. But I will never, ever embarrass anybody or humiliate anybody. The minute that happens on this show, I'm out of here. You're not going to do that. We're going to no, do that for no, no. you. You're the good no, cop. No, no, because, Daniel no. Daniel just embarrassed himself. I'm not, I, I'm not the good cop. I respect these people. Do you guys get it? <laughs> you shouldn't. You have paid my... You have paid... You have made me who I am today. I'm not Thank here you. to fuck anybody up. I laugh. The minute one, someone says something disrespectful to me... Or to you, I'm out of here. We're not going to be disrespectful to you. We will make fun of these people no, no, that sign I'm, up for the no, show. No, I'm in service. No, we, we make fun you, of them. You, no, That's you guys are so nice. Look, at, the look at me. Yeah. Why can't, you, why can't you accept the word you're nice people? Yeah. You know what? It's not... Do you know how many people are bullied and hurt by comments? No, you get it? It's like a... Social media has made the world crazy. <laughs> I should, I, maybe I should have sent... Wrong. I, I probably should have sent you an episode to watch before... Uh, yeah. We make you know, fun of people. Thank you, Ric Flair. It it's really good. saved well, me I don't, I don't make fun of people. You don't have and, to. And it, uh, I'm ready to leave in that one minute, guys. No, don't so leave. I love you. I am. Don't I am. leave, Rick. Am. No, don't leave. No, hang on. You know out. why? No. I'm uncomfortable with the format. I appreciate the opportunity. No, it's come on, me. Rick. I no. will never, ever. Yo, you did so bad, Rick Flair. Damn, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Damn. Nice I, going, Hey, 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 there, hey there, there, this is a there is dream. no humor in the world that makes fun of people. Uh, by that shit. Oh, oh, yeah. Guess what? I, I apologize. I'm not one of them. No, you're good. You don't have to. No, I'm not apologizing. I'm, I'm not an unusually fight. horrible I will, I man. will have fun, but I won't make fun. Beautiful. Well, we got you covered. We've had this happen before. Good cop, bad cop. Woo! You're the good cop. Daniel Shepard is the bad comedian, and we are the bad cops. And that, my friends, is where things started to take a turn for the worst. Look, I thought everything was fine. Ric Flair's a little drunk, doesn't understand the format of the show. Tony's like, don't worry, we'll roast the guys. You can be the good cop. Uh, it's something that's happened on the show before. There's been other people on that didn't want to make fun of people. So we figured that this would just be, you know, how the show would continue. And that Ric Flair would chime in with his thoughts here and there. Um, but unfortunately, with the murderer's row of other comedians, it started to stir them up a little bit. And they started to smell blood in the water, if you will. So they started to poke the bear a little bit. And they started cracking jokes and pushing things, which led to this moment here. Check out this clip where Ric Flair finally stood up, had enough. I'm walking off of this show. Check out this clip. Yeah. You are here with Ric Flair. You are yeah. a wrestling coach. Uh, how does it feel to uh, have a performance like that in front of Ric Flair? Fuck. <laughs> no, so. hey. Um, actually, to be honest with you, I respect that very much. My son was a great amateur wrestler. And um, this is why I'm going to make this. This is, this is why. Come here, guys. This is why I'm leaving after I say this. No, 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 stop, 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 no, 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 no. I have more respect for people that take their time to support any youthful athletic event. My son was a great amateur wrestler. He died of a heroin overdose. Oh. And two was on 13. I know. I don't hear that. I'm over that. But anybody that could take time away from their life to support kids and make them better, because I can tell you right now, 
from personal experience and because I believe it in my heart. That's you ever had Asian You're pussy? Right. <laughs> I, I guess that's funny. What are the what are the ages of the uh, people that you're coaching, guy? Uh, it's it's high school age, so ninth grade. Rick, don't leave. Are you really leaving, Rick? Don't do it. Oh no! Thank you for all the respect. We lost Rick Flair, everybody. I love you, Rick. Thanks for doing this. I'll see you afterwards. No, you're good. You're good. We love you. Make some noise for Rick Flair, everybody. Come on. Thank you all for all the respect. But I, I'm, I will never sign up to make fun of people that donate their time. I won't. Oh. I swear Look. to God, I respect you all and thank you for coming out. I can have fun. I will never make fun of time of people that donate their personal time to making children better. Ric Flair, everybody. The legend, the nature boy. Come here, Shane. Get your sweet ass over here. Come on. The great Ric Flair. Can you uh, make sure he gets yeah. hey, Tony, wherever he hey, needs Tony, to be? Hey, Tony. Yeah. Ooh, what? <laughs> yeah. Which one of you motherfuckers played that music? It was uh, that was John Deeds <laughs> over yes, there. Dude, that uh, was the guy good. that was. That was the guy that was. Late. Which one of you monsters? Late. Beast. All right, okay, thank you. Sit Beast. down. Sit the fuck Shit, down. Dude. Jesus Christ. Tony, Ric Flair yeah. has a point. This show is demeaning. It really is. <laughs> so Ric Flair being inspired by this aspiring shitty comedian's day job of being a guy that trains kids how to wrestle related it to his own son who used to be a wrestler, don't you know? And it tugged at Ric Flair's heartstrings, and he had enough. He could not make fun of this guy. He could not stand for it. And he walked off the stage indignantly after giving everybody a piece of his mind. Which completely embarrassed him in front of this crowd and led the rest of this murderer's row of comedians to have a little fun with Ric Flair at his expense after he left. Check out this clip. Jesus yeah, fucking no, Christ. For fun, I Oh, liked... there goes the black guy now, too. There we go. Just, everybody's slowly leaving. This is like a reverse Royal Rumble. There goes Ric Flair in the number one spot, a black athlete in the number two. Every 60 seconds, another person leaves. We have a young Roman Reigns here, ready to go at any point. Okay. Tony, Tony's mad at me. Come on up. No, I'm not. Let's not make that the theme. We have a I'm format not, on this I'm show. Yeah, Tony, 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 Tony. Oh my God. I, was, I wasn't making fun of Ric Flair that much. I feel like we were mild. No one even knows that that's You're the one, one who ruined that's a it. Fucking ruined thing. It. I didn't ruin it. The piano guy ruined it. Piano that's guy a, definitely ruined it. Piano guy ruined it. Let's move forward. We move forward here. I'm the host. We're moving forward. That's a legend, to mock him to his face like that awesomely, <laughs> out, out of line. Yeah, he was just talking about his dead son. Oh. You know. oh my God. We are torching bridges here today. I think that podcast is never going to be rescheduled at this pace. Yeah. <laughs> guy, you will always be known as the guy that was on this stage when Ric Flair left. There was a lot of, a lot of moments where it almost happened. Good job, guy. Don't make a big deal about coaching kids and wrestling next time. That really fucked everything up. Yeah. Here's a little joke book. There you go. Guy hurt everybody. Oh, my God. Oh, it Rick was Flair so much Flair. better Jesus when Ric Flair was here telling weird stories. Do Ric Flair sucks. Yes. Yes, it was. Lewis, Ric Flair sucks. Ric Flair sucks. Oh, okay. Thank you, guys. Come on. That's good. His son got out easy. I'm so disappointed how much he sucks. I wanted to love him. I wanted to love yeah, him. I wanted it. Everyone here was like, ah, fuck it. Don't meet your heroes, you know? Now look, some of you might agree with Ric Flair. You might be offended by this kind of comedy. And look, to each his own, I understand. Some people like this kind of comedy. Other people are huge pussies. I understand that. I am not here to judge. 
Uh, but clearly somebody did not pass along the memo to Ric Flair what exactly kind of show he was getting himself into because that's what roast comedians do, especially those that hang around the Kill Tony crowd, uh, the Joe Rogan crowd. These are some dirty comedians. These guys have no limits. There is no place that they won't go as Ric Flair's the death of Ric Flair's son by heroin overdose was uh, a reoccurring theme uh, of jokes at the expense of Ric Flair after he left. Uh, Look, man, it is what it is. Ric Flair, in my opinion, embarrassed himself here, made an ass of himself. He didn't have to participate in ripping on anybody or making fun of anybody. Uh, All he had to do was sit there and laugh and be the nature boy, right? Throw a couple woos out there. It would have been a great night. Instead, he had to make it about him. He had to get offended. He had to stand up on his pedestal multiple times, try to preach to the crowd, try to explain how it's not right to make fun of people. He's scolding the crowd. What do you people not understand about being... Nice. I don't know, man. You're at a fucking comedy show. Relax. Drunk off of his mind. Was falling asleep half the time he was there. Comedians called him a fun Joe Biden, which is hilarious. Um, <laughs> this was just, this was an incredible uh An incredible, I don't even know how to describe it. An incredible turn of events, I guess, is the best way to describe it. All of these comedians up there with Ric Flair, I didn't, I did not think Rick was going to get that uh, touchy and offended, but I think he embarrassed himself. I think, uh, you know, nobody thought highly of Ric Flair after that. I think he kind of lowered his stock with everybody involved there. You know, it was uh, it was several people that said, don't meet your heroes after that. Um, I don't know what Rick was thinking other than he was drunk, um, didn't want to get himself caught up in any kind of scandal or get himself in any kind of trouble, didn't want to be tied or associated, didn't want the clip to get out there of, Ooh, look at Ric Flair calling this guy a fucking, you know, making fun of this guy for whatever reason. But unfortunately, now Ric Flair's appearance will be remembered for something else entirely different. And I think he's lost a lot of cool factor points, in my opinion. Look, a roast, roast battle comedians are, it's, it's a different breed. It's a different thing. Uh, maybe... Somebody should have gave Rick a heads up and told him what he was about to be getting into. I don't know what kind of stand-up comedy Ric Flair enjoys. Uh, He must like the Jeff Foxworthy brand of stand-up comedy. The Dane Cook brand of stand-up comedy. The real PG. Maybe he likes the puppet guy. What's that guy's name? The the puppet guy? The guy with the puppets? Maybe that's his... Style of stand-up comedy. I like the shit that goes for the jugular. I like the ruthless shit. I like the dirty shit. I like the stuff that has an edge. That pushes boundaries. The kind of stuff that you would find on a Kill Tony. From an Ari Shafir or a Shane Gillis. These are my kind of guys. Who just continued to bury Ric Flair after he left. Ah, it was so great. It was so great. What a moment in Kill Tony history. And uh, what an embarrassing, in my opinion, moment for Ric Flair. But look, that's the beauty of this kind of thing. Some of you are going to see this a completely different way. Some of you will see the, the, the comedians as embarrassing and shameful. And that Ric Flair did a good thing by standing up for himself and walking out and preaching to the crowd about how they're all going to hell. He didn't quite say that, but he made him feel that way. He made him feel bad. Got the lecture by the stern old man. I haven't seen a lot of Ric Flair lately. Rick hasn't been doing his podcast as of late. I'm good, glad to see that he's still in good health. I was a little bit worried about that, but God damn, man, take a fucking joke. People that can't take a joke or what's 
wrong with today's society. That's where all these Karens come from. That's where all this cancel culture shit comes from. You are personally offended, so you have to burn everything down because of it. Some guy said a joke you didn't like. Cancel him. Burn him at the stake. It's a joke. Stand-up comedy show. It's meant to push buttons. It's meant to push boundaries. It's meant to make you feel uncomfortable. If you don't like it, don't watch, don't listen. That's fine. I understand it. And maybe that was the whole problem with Ric Flair. He's just not a stand-up comedy guy. Not his scene. Not his style. And I uh, just felt uncomfortable. You could tell he did. He was texting on his phone when he wasn't sleeping. He was not listening. He was not paying attention. He was not laughing at anything. He looked like he was annoyed to be there from the very beginning. Which, fine. You know, if you didn't want to be there, don't be there then. Don't tell Tony that you're going to go there and fucking hang out. I mean, Kill Tony is a huge, huge, huge show. I mean, they sell out to thousands every single night. So uh, every show that they do, that is. So it's a big, big deal. It's a big show. It has a wide audience. And uh, apparently, unfortunately for Ric Flair, that wide audience was introduced to a version of Ric Flair that they never thought they would see, that they never thought they would hear, the angry offended, touchy old grandpa, the uncool guy, the preachy, awkward, drunk guy that talks over everybody and makes a complete ass of himself. But look, that's just my thoughts. That's just my opinion. What are your thoughts on this segment? You can check out the full episode of Kill Tony that Ric Flair was on in the link down below in the description. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Did Rick make an ass of himself? Did he embarrass himself? Or should these comedians be ashamed? Be ashamed of themselves for their naughty content. Let me know in the comments below. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next. Let me tell you something, brother. You can check out full episodes each and every Sunday right here on this channel, dude. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to take your vitamins and say your prayers, brother.